What's up, everybody? I'm David Hain. Welcome to episode 106 of the A to D from Attic to Disciple podcast. If you would like one on one counseling or would like to launch or join a group using the podcasts or the From Ashes to Destiny curriculum, please send me a message by email at David from A to D at gmail.com or go to my website www.fromatod.org and click on the contact page. When we come back, we'll get into this episode entitled Recovery, Reclaim, Reshape, and Refine Your Future. Welcome back to episode 106 of the A to D from Addict to Disciple podcast entitled Recovery, Reclaim, Reshape, and Refine Your Future. This episode is in response to a listener who asked, what does living a life of recovery look like? Well, first and foremost, I believe it involves two key things. The first being process and find healing for the wound of your past. And the second, really see that it is time for a change and choose life. And I'd like to start out today by getting some quotes from American singer and the queen of rock and roll, Tina Turner, who said in an interview, I lived a shameful life and I found a way to live with it by just being ashamed. I started seeing my life. I started really seeing that I had to make a change. If you don't address the wounds of your past, you continue to bleed. Wow. Can you see Tina Turner's journey in there from living being ashamed to seeing that it was time for a change and addressing her wounds so she could stop the bleeding? Katori Hall, who wrote Tina, the Tina Turner musical, said about Tina and her desire to get her name back as part of her divorce settlement said, and I quote, to keep it is to reclaim it, reshape it, refine it. As you listen to this episode, think about how your recovery involves reclaiming, reshaping, and refining your life. The Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, SAMHSA, defined 10 guiding principles of recovery. I'll use these 10 principles to outline the core meaning of what recovery is and how substance abusers in recovery maintain sobriety. As I talk about each of these principles, I'll speak as one in recovery would react to each question. Are you ready? Here's those 10 principles. Number one, recovery emerges from hope. It is because I have hope that I can be one of the ones who make it, that I chose to start the journey of recovery. But I must be honest, my hope is shallow because I've tried before and failed. My hope is weak because I don't fully trust myself yet. My hope is fragile because I know you doubt my motives and think I'm still trying to manipulate you. You get the play here? Can you hear the thoughts of someone in recovery in response to that statement about recovery emerging from hope? Number two, recovery is person driven. I know my active addiction that I always thought I was right and they had a better idea than everyone else. But I've reached the point that if I'm going to succeed in recovery, it has to be because I want it, that I want my life back, that I choose life, and I see that addiction is death for me and I'm tired of being one of the living dead. Number three, Recovery happens through many pathways. I know that recovery is not a simple formula. It is going to be hard work. I've reached a point that I'm ready to do the work. 
I've decided to be teachable, to listen and learn from others who have made it, to look for wisdom and nuggets of gold from all who are counseling and coaching me. I want to be able to walk in the counsel of many because my way has failed miserably over and over again. Number four, recovery is a holistic process. I am ready to not only uncover the root cause of my addiction and find healing, I also know that I need to work on my emotional, physical, mental, spiritual, and social aspects and develop positive character traits that will be foundational to my sustained recovery. Number five, recovery needs the support of family, friends, and peers. Well, first and foremost, I've come to the realization that what I desperately need is positive peer support. I have believed for too long that I'm unworthy or incapable of breaking free from my addiction. I need to be surrounded by friends and family, whether it is my birth family, my marriage family, or my new family in recovery. To be successful at this, I must know that I am supported and that I am in a safe place and that I am heard. Number six, recovery is supported by developing emotional bonds with empowering individuals. I have felt powerlessness and hopelessness for too many years. I'm ready to risk emotional connection. I don't even know what that means, but I'm ready to risk it. And I'm ready for attachment with people who can empower me to find this elusive thing called sustained recovery. Number seven, recovery is culturally based. One of the reasons that I failed so many times before at rehab and recovery is that I have not felt that I was surrounded by people with the same values, beliefs, traditions, and experience as me. If I'm to trust someone with my life, I need to know that they know what it's like being me. I need culturally based models that I can acquire and that fit me in my circumstances. Number eight, recovery is supported by addressing past traumas. Anyone and everyone who's ever been an addict knows that we all have some form of PTSD and I'm included in that. I need someone who can help me process the trauma without reliving it again and again as if it's happening today. I need to be able to talk about it, to find healing, and to move forward because I've successfully processed that trauma and can deal with life in life's terms. Number nine, recovery involves family and community responsibility. I realize that my addiction has had a ripple effect throughout my family, my friends, my coworkers, and my community. To be honest, I really don't know how to make amends with all those people, but I am willing to try. I truly want to give back to the community that I took so much from. I'm truly ready to be involved with family and to help them find healing from the pain that I've caused. Number 10, Recovery is based on respect. How do I ever overcome the stigma of being an addict? It haunts me every time people ask where I've been or when I have to fill out an application for a place to live or a job and I have those gaps in my resume or CV. How can I ever regain the respect of those people that I've hurt so much by my choices in addiction. For me, 
I know the key is to learn to like the person in the mirror. Self-respect will be a key step in my recovery. I hope you've been able to identify with each of those 10 reactions that I gave to the 10 principles. And in conclusion, I want to urge everyone to not to try to walk this journey of recovery alone. And remember that even if you slip or fall, it does not mean that you have failed. Stay focused on your objective and you will grow in your control of your actions as you reclaim, reshape, and refine your future. Thanks for listening to this episode of the A to D from Addict to Disciple podcast. If you would like to join an online group or get one-on-one counseling to help you as you work these 10 principles in recovery, please message me on the link in this podcast or email me at david from a to d at gmail.com or go to my website www.fromatod.org and click on the contact page. You can keep in touch with what we're doing in From A to D by following me on Instagram at David from A to D. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please remember to like and share with your friends. Tune in Monday for our next episode. And as always, stay safe and stay strong.